Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Kentucky Small Business Development Center's weekly webinar. We're awfully glad you're here today. Um, as we allow attendees a few minutes to join our event, I'd like to share some info about the Kentucky Small Business Development Center. As the only statewide nationally accredited program that provides entrepreneurial and business development services, the Kentucky SBDC plays a vital role in the Commonwealth's economic development by assisting entrepreneurs at every stage of the business life cycle. For almost 40 years, the Kentucky SBDC has assisted emerging and growing businesses by providing professional expertise, tools, and information necessary to make sound business decisions in a complex and ever-changing marketplace. We do this at no cost to our clients, thanks to the U.S. Small Business Administration, who co-sponsors our program, which is then administered by the University of Kentucky, who partners with regional universities, colleges, and local economic development agencies. We're also part of a national network, America's SBDC, with over 1,000 centers across the nation. To learn more about us, please visit kybizhelp.com. There you'll find additional resources to help start, fund, and grow your business. If you'd like to request personal assistance, email us at info at kybizhelp.com or call 1-888-475-7232. Also, the recording of today's webinar will be emailed to you this afternoon, so you can watch it as many times as you like. Also, if you look to the right of the screen, you'll find the chat feature. If you have any questions for our presenter, you can post them here and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. If you would, please try it out by saying hello and telling us where you're from. I'm Dave Etkin. I'm the center director here in Louisville at the Louisville Small Business Development Center, uh, which is one of 15 centers around Kentucky. And with me today is Tony Sears, our assistant center director. Hello, Tony. Hi, Dave. Hi. I wanted to say hello to Predup, Predup Gupta. They beat everyone in the chat and said hello. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll get a nice prize today. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> um, we got a, We've uh, we had uh, our presenter today, Emily Ryan, who is a CEO and co-founder of Westfield Creative out of Chicago, uh, on a couple of weeks ago, and we've got so many re requests and responses from her that we thought we'd have her back in again to talk more about email marketing and how important it is and how to kind of automate that today. So. Um, Emily, I'd like to just uh, jump right in because uh, I'm very interested in this as well. And let's just uh, pop right in and, and, uh, and learn about this uh, email automation today. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for that that intro. And I'm so excited to, to be here today with you guys. Um, this is going to be fun. I'm actually going to walk you through some really, really great things you can do uh, with your with your MailChimp account or with your email, whatever platform you use. Um, so some really important things for small businesses. Uh, my company, um, I'll actually share my slides with you guys. Um, well, there they are. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan, who is, who is back there behind the scenes. Um, I'm going to tell you who I am. So today we're going to talk about email marketing for your business and how important it is. And I'm going to walk you through one thing that you must have. Um, so I'm Emily and uh, I love to talk about email. Um, I run a small digital marketing agency, Westfield Creative, and we've been working with clients, many small businesses, medium sized businesses uh, for the last five years. Um, wide range of businesses uh, from we have a pipeline company to a book author to um, you name it to the coffee shop down the street. Um, everybody needs email. So it's, it's a really cool business to be in. Um, I am based uh, in the suburbs of Chicago, but I, I lived in New York City many years and I'm originally from North Carolina and I actually went to school in Cincinnati. So not too far from you guys. Um, so anyway, I'm also a MailChimp partner, uh, which means I'm part of their partner program. Uh, it's a wonderful program. And I'm also MailChimp certified. I've done two certification courses that only partners can do, uh, email marketing and a, a MailChimp Foundation certification. Um, and Freddie is the little MailChimp. That's his name. So I love Freddie. All right, so I'm going to talk today first about a welcome email. And I, I do have a poll over here on the right side. You should see, um, does your business have a welcome email set up? 
A welcome email is so important, and, and I just want to tell you what it is, first of all, in case you don't know. Uh, so when someone signs up for your email list, for your newsletter, where, wherever they sign up, it is an opportunity for you to make a great first impression. Um, send them a welcome email to introduce your, your business, say thank you for subscribing, or offer a special promotion. Um, in MailChimp, you can use an automation so that this just sends automatically whenever someone signs up for your list um, and they will receive your welcome email. Um, and I think it's really important to give you guys some stats on welcome emails because they are so incredibly effective. Um, they generate five times more click throughs than a standard, just a standard email campaign. So these automated welcomes, people open them and they click. 74% um, of consumers expect a welcome email when they sign up. So when you sign up, you want to get something. You want something to come in your inbox. So make sure you deliver. Um, and then open rates for welcome emails are, are up to 86% higher than standard emails. Um, I'm just going to make sure everyone's good in the chat here. Looks like you guys are, are doing good there. So. Um, feel free to put questions in the chat and we will try to get get to some of those as we go through. Um, OK, and then three things quickly for today. Uh, so what is an automated welcome email? I just kind of explained that and why you must have one. We're going to talk about how to get this get, get this going. It's a very easy process. Um, but what I like to do is set up a landing page to collect subscribers. And then we're going to set up a welcome email automation that is triggered when someone signs up on that landing page. Um, so it's it's a little bit of a setup, but once you have it done, it runs forever. And they're a must. So I cannot stress enough the importance of a great and very simple welcome email. It does not have to be complicated. Uh, it takes very little time to set up and it's automated forever. Um, even though it's automated, I do recommend going back in to your, your welcome email and, and checking it from time, you know, every couple months to make sure it's still relevant. Um, and then later on, a couple weeks from now, we may do another one of these sessions where I talk about doing a welcome email series of emails, which is three to four emails or, or five to six, whatever you'd like, staggered out over a period of a couple weeks or two weeks or whatever. Um, a, a series of welcome emails is an awesome way to get people really engaged with your business. Um, these are just two welcome emails that I really, really like. Uh, one is actually a hair care company, but I, when I got her email, I, I loved it. It's literally, thank you for signing up her picture and thanks for, for choosing this. Um, it's a very simple email, but I thought it, it just really worked well. Um, and then uh, the Peach Truck, which is based in Nashville, they're one of my favorite companies that use MailChimp. Um, they send this email right when you sign up and it tells their story. And I actually read, it's, a, it's kind of a long email, but I read the whole email and, and they say it started in a parking lot and it gives a picture of the founders and it really puts a face to their brand. And I thought this was such a nice welcome to their, to their company. Um, and then you can see welcome emails really work if you sell anything online. Um, a lot of companies, what they do is they'll trigger a, an email that gives you an extra discount. So thanks for subscribing. Here's 10% off to go back and check out from our store. Um, so you can see here this welcome email. Um, this was a pop-up where people subscribed on their website and then we triggered a welcome email and it's it has you know raised 37 plus thousand dollars from just a welcome email. So I'm telling you guys, they are powerful, powerful things. Um, so uh, before I dive in to show you exactly how to do it, I just wanna give you a few quick quick welcome email tips um, i always recommend having it sent immediately after they sign up uh, you will see in mailchimp they give lots of options for timing you can have it sent one hour later you can have it sent the next day or five hours later but a welcome email i believe should be sent immediately when someone signs up so they really get that that welcome right away um, it should have a great subject line um, something something interesting you know not just welcome. Um, sometimes we do, you know, we're, we're so glad you're here or um, here's what you can expect from us. You know, just something interesting. Maybe maybe put an emoji in the subject line as well. Um, that 
usually will stand out in people's inbox. Um, thank them for signing up and for following along. This, this welcome email is really a thank you. Thank you for joining my list, for taking the time to put your name and email into a box. And thanks for, for coming along on the ride with us and, and seeing what we're up to. Um, and then this, this one is really important. Explain to them what they can expect from your emails and how often they can expect to hear from you. So people want to know how often you're going to be reaching out. So you can even say something like, listen, we're not going to be emailing you very often, but you can expect an email from us maybe once a month or once a week, you know, whatever it is. But I really like to tell people, you know, what they can expect by joining your list um, and, and what kind of content they can expect. You can expect to get discounts occasionally um, or interesting or interesting content or, or just the occasional funny story. Um, I, I love letting people know very clearly what, what they're going to get. You should also explain what you do. Um, it's a, the welcome email is a great chance to say, you know, thank you. And um, here's a little bit about us. Um, our company was founded in, in whatever, and this is exactly what we do. And, and since this is an automated email, it's a great way to just let people know about your business. Um, I also love to kind of end a welcome email with asking a question or to even ask people to reply back and tell, tell you something. So I see a lot of emails where people will say, you know, re reply to this email and, and tell me what you're up to, or I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear from you. And, um, you know, tell me, tell me one funny fact about yourself. Um, it's a great way to get people to just, to just send you an email and start engaging with your business. Um, and then lastly, I would love for you to try to just keep your welcome email very simple. These emails do not have to be complicated. They don't have to have five, six, seven sections of content. It is literally a welcome to our business. Here's who we are. Thanks for subscribing. So keep it, keep it simple. All right, so that's kind of my, my quick rundown. I'm going to start sharing my screen and I wanna walk you through how you can do this in, in no time. Um, so I'm going to turn my screen, my screen share on. Give me one sec. Okay. And hopefully you all can see um, this is my MailChimp account. Um, and for today, uh, you can see MailChimp actually, if you, if you all use this, they recently changed, made some pretty big changes. Um, and so now we have this like left sidebar over here. Everything is has moved around. Um, so you can you can follow along with me if you're not used to seeing this. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click create. This create button is like the heart of MailChimp. It's, you know, you can do so many things. You can create a survey. You can create a Facebook ad. You can even do social posts right in MailChimp. Uh, but for today, we're going to do an email. This is still an email, but it's just an automated one. So we're going to click email and then you have several options. So we're not doing a regular email. We're doing an automated email. And then there are tons of automated emails available to you in MailChimp that are incredible. Um, you know, a happy birthday email that, that pulls in that data and, and triggers automatically in someone's birthday month. Um, there, I, I encourage you to look through, look through these, these different automations. There are so many good ones. You can email subscribers when they're tagged. So you can give people a specific category so if you you set up a tag that says um this this person you know l you know loves loves the color red so you can set up a, a subscribe uh, an email that will will be triggered when someone is tagged with that tag um which is really cool but we're going to do the welcome welcome new subscribers and you can just give your your welcome email name and you're going to pick the audience that is associated with this so I'm just picking one of mine for now. And you'll see here, we have three options here as well. We have a series, onboarding series, and then we have a single welcome email. So the series is what I mentioned if you wanna do you know, a longer automated series over, over a couple weeks. Um, but we're gonna do this for now and begin. And it's, it's really this easy. So what I'm gonna do, it's gonna load here. And here is just the quick setup. Um, you know, we have your from name, we have your email. Uh, I talk a lot about from name and it's it's really important if you own a business. Um, so a lot of people, you know, obviously will put your business name, but I love for small businesses that they come from a person. So I think it's always helpful 
to, to test that and see, see if your open rates are higher. But saying, you know, Emily from Westfield Creative um, might stand out a little bit more in people's inboxes than just Westfield Creative. Um, it just personalizes it a little bit more. Um, and then up here, you're gonna see the timing. This is really important. So new subscribe contacts immediately after they join my list. So again, like I said, we can put any, any kind of delay, but I always like to do immediately and click save. And then obviously your subject line, uh, MailChimp has this great feature over here, which gives you lots of great tips on subject lines. Like they should be fewer than nine words. I see a lot of long subject lines and I love when people keep it short and simple. Um, so the shorter, the better. And then they say emojis are great, but don't use them all the time. Don't use tons of them. Um, and then, you know, just some other tips here. So I like to do, we're so glad you're here. And then we could throw in, you know, just a fun emoji. And, and you can really be creative with emojis. Um, you know, they, they seem like they might be a little bit cheesy, but, you know, they actually have some that are, let's see here, you know, you could put a calendar. If you're doing a reminder email, you could do a calendar. Um, there are some really great options. Um, if it's fall, you could obviously use fall leads and stuff like that. And then you have your, your preview text, which is kind of your second subject line. So this is another chance for you to tell what your email is going to be about. Um, so I'm just going to do, here's what you can expect from us. Okay, and then now to designing the actual email. I'm, I'm not gonna go super deep into designing the welcome email, um, but what I recommend is keeping it really simple. So it, it pulled in this, this image that I use as kind of a logo sometimes. Um, but you'll see here, MailChimp gives you a very, very basic template. And there is so much you can do with this with this template. So one thing I love to do um, is just drag in uh, maybe an, a header image at the top. So um, let's see here. I'm going to just pull this to the top. That's a little image. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through what I normally do when I design an email. Um, I'm going to click style up here and I'm just going to click page and change the background color. So you can make it, you know, whatever color you want. Um, I sometimes like an all white, just an all white email to not distract from everything else. Um, and then here, so you'll see this weird coding here. This is, uh, these are called merge tags. So if you are collecting people's first name, it will populate their name. So I'll show you what it's gonna look like when we send it. So it'll say here, hi, Adrian. So it's really personalizing the email. Um, my code is a little bit strange. It has a period, so I just wanna take out that period. Um, if you need this, this merge tag code, I'm happy to, to send it to you. Um, what this does is it says, if there is no first name for that person, we're gonna just say hello. So I think, I think that's what the code is right now, um, unless it's not working correctly. Um, I may I may have to fix the code. I don't I don't know what it's pulling in, but um, there are some interesting things you can do with with personalization here. Um, okay, so then we're going to just say and, and instead of hi, I might just say welcome, welcome Emily, you know whatever it is, um, and then everything here can be customized. So the obviously the fonts, um, the colors, what, whatever you need to do um, can be totally customized. We're so glad you're here. We'll keep you in the loop with our latest news and special offers. And then what I normally would do is drag in a section, maybe like an about us section. So I'm gonna use this image and text option here and drag it in. And I'm actually gonna change it a little bit to be, go to settings and I'm gonna change it so that we have kind of this little content section here. And I'm gonna make this a little about us section, more about us. So you can see here, I'm just gonna add like an additional section. You can add, you know, you can add some fun color to it. Um, and then you can maybe write like a short bio um, about your business in this section and then maybe include a photo of yourself as well. Um, just because this is here. Um, and this is just a nice way to add, you know, add another section to your email. Um, you'll, you'll see there's still a lot of formatting that really needs to be done here, but um, I think it's nice, you know, 
to have different sections. So we'll, we'll have welcome, we're glad you're here, keep you in the loop. Um, maybe say you can expect to hear from us. Um, you can expect an email from us every week. Um, and keep it light and you can even add some humor into it as well. People, people love, love a good laugh. So you can expect an email from us every week. That is unless my kids don't cooperate or something. Um, you know, there are people behind the business. So I always love to encourage people to make sure, make sure you're, you're you, um, this is your business. Um, so we almost have have a basic layout of a welcome email. You could also add your social buttons here at the bottom um, so that people can click on your social buttons. Uh, those can be changed to different styles. So you can see here um, if I don't want to use the colorful ones. Um, and then, you know, if you want to pull in, if you want to put a quote in from someone, I, I like to create graphics in a program called Canva. And let me see if I have any in my account. Um, but you may want to pull in like like another another graphic or two. I also had so this was a, a workshop I did for Mailchimp. So you may want to include like like something fun people can watch. Um, if you want to see more about me, click click on this to watch that video. So I may include that in my welcome email as well. Um, so you can really build an email really quickly. It does not have to be complicated. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to click save and continue and you're always welcome to save save as a template so if you want to maybe use this on down the road sometime you can save save the template so we're going to do save and continue and then it's going to give you kind of a rundown of your email this is what you have going on and then you just click start and so what's cool about this is anytime someone joins this list they're, ne they're now going to get, I'm going to click on campaigns, they're now going to get this welcome email, single welcome email right here, and it says sending. And what's cool is we will be able to see, you know, who's opening, how many people are clicking, and it's just an ongoing, ongoing email. Okay, so now, how do we get people, how do we get people into this, this automated workflow? So I also wanted to show you guys really quickly how to create a simple landing page to collect, collect these, these emails so that they can get this welcome email. So as you see, I clicked create and then landing page and um, collect new subscribers. And then that's gonna be the same Emily's email checklist. And we're gonna create a very, very quick landing page so MailChimp gives you some really great templates here for different landing pages. You can even um, accept payments through a landing page if you have Square or Stripe. Um, so if you, you have one product you wanna sell, you can create a, a landing page for that, which is really cool. Uh, but for today, I'm just gonna click this grow your list option. And so I recommend setting a landing page up that you can share with people to, to collect subscribers. Um, want to get my weekly newsletter. Um, this is just a very simple landing page, again, that we're, we're going to use. Um, and, and what I make sure I always do is include the first name field so that we're always capturing that data in case we ever want to use it to target people. Um, of course, everything here can be totally customized. So here's something, so I'm gonna change the background color of this just to make it a little more fun. Want to get my weekly newsletter. Um, here's a little space where you can put more details about the landing pages. It's landing page, sign up below to make to, to be added to my list or whatever. And get fun email tips every week to your inbox. All right, so you can see I created this in about two minutes. Um, I would probably customize it a little bit more and make it make it look a lot prettier. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with these landing pages. Uh, one one thing I love doing is putting uh, an image background. So if you have a really cool image for the background, you can do that. And then you can you can make it you can adjust the transparency and so that it's just in the background. Just a lot of cool stuff you can do with landing pages.
Um, so there, so we have our landing page that's, that's now gonna collect people, it's gonna put them on my list, and then they're gonna get the welcome email right away. So I'm gonna save that, and then I'm going to publish this really quick just to show you. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I think everything's set, we're gonna click publish. And what it does is it gives you a link. So it gives you a link right here. And this link you can share on Facebook, you can share on your Instagram bio, uh, you can share on LinkedIn, and you can just constantly work on growing your list and getting people to sign up. So that's what happens when, when they click the link. And then the second they hit that subscribe button, they're gonna get that welcome email because they're being added to, to your list. Um, so I hope that hope that makes sense. Um, hope that makes sense for you. So landing page and automated welcome email. Um, that was a very quick. Uh, hold on, I'm going to just stop sharing my screen real quick. <laughs> that was a very quick rundown of how to do a welcome email and a landing page. Um, so I know that was super fast. So let me know. Um, let me know if you have questions. The main thing is. I want you to just set something up. I want you to have something that welcomes people to your list. Even, even if you spend five minutes doing it today, um, a welcome email is just a really nice thing to have. Um, okay, so I I am seeing, seeing some questions. Yeah. yeah, we do have a lot of questions today. Um, so, <clears throat> Um, and and uh, as you mentioned earlier, I just want to kind of say that uh, we'll probably send out some information to everybody. Maybe, um, we're going to try to put together with Emily a, a little deeper dive on um, on some things because uh, I, you know, again, that was kind of quick, and there's a lot of other things we can do that uh, looking at something that's pretty cool. So yeah, there's so much. Yeah, I, I could talk for hours hours about it. Yeah. Um, so, so let me uh, let me ask a quick question here. Uh, um, from uh, Benny, who Benny Lopez, who I know very well. How you doing, Benny? So she's asking about the uh, legal responsibility about unsubscribing. Is there an yeah. automated feature to unsubscribe? Is there an automated feature? So that everything that you're sending out from Mailchimp has has a footer with that unsubscribe link, and I don't think I showed you that, but it is it has to literally has to be on all your emails, or Mailchimp won't allow you to to send it or publish it. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, MailChimp, when, when you see that footer in your email that they automatically put all this information in, the only two things that are required by law for you to put in your email are an unsubscribe link, and, and you can word that however you want. You can say, click here to no longer receive my emails, or you can just use the word unsubscribe. There, there are many like creative ways people word it. I always make sure that it's really visible um, I, I hate when people put it so it's like like the smallest font ever or smallest size. It's okay if people unsubscribe. You you really don't don't need to have people on your list that don't want to be there. So just make it visible. Make sure it's there. Um, so unsubscribe link and your address. Mailchimp requires an actual physical address on your emails. It's part of a can can spam law, um, so you do actually have to have that. And there are again creative ways to put that. Um, we we usually put the bottom of our emails. Um, this email was made with love at, and then we put our address. Um, so there there are creative ways to do that. Nice. Hey Tony, got a question? Yes, I do. So this comes from Miss Evans. Hi, Miss Evans. She says, so to set up a welcome email, should I have a website first? That's a great, great question. You do not need a website at all to set up a welcome email. As you can see, I created a landing page, which is totally free in your MailChimp. If you sign up for a MailChimp account today, you can create a landing page for free. And that landing page is kind of like it's kind of like a web website. It's a it's a link that someone can go to. Uh, it's a one page. It's like a one page website almost. Um, so you do not you do not need a website. You can create a landing page to get people to sign up, and then you create your email in mail your automated email in Mailchimp. Okay, we had a few questions that popped up when you were creating the welcome email. So I'm kind yeah. of just push, push them out there. So Martha asks, what about videos in welcome emails? Do you recommend using them or relying more on text and images? Yeah, you can absolutely add a video. Um, there is a video block 
option that you can drag into your email. Um, it, if you have a nice, and I actually thought about doing this for myself, is recording a video of me talking, saying, hey guys, thank you so much for joining my list. Um, and I actually think that would be a creative thing to put in your welcome email. The thing you have to be careful with with video is it may not load for some people if they're out and about and they open email on their phone. You have to be careful with with video. Um, I think it's a great, great thing to add to emails, but just just be aware that sometimes it may not load load for someone. OK, can I keep going, Dave, or you want yeah. you have a question? OK, yep. so. Um, Howard asked, how do you set up security for these accounts? This is when, when you were um, creating the welcome email. Yeah. He says, how do you set up security for these accounts as a birth date is legally protected data? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So birthday is something they would have to give you. They would have to opt in and provide you that. So on your on your landing page or on wherever you're collecting signups, whether that's a pop up on your website or wherever, um, that would be something like, oh, um, you know, what's leave us your birth date and we'll send you send you a treat once a year or something um, to your inbox. Um, that that is something they they would have to provide to you. But you're absolutely allowed to collect that in Mailchimp if if they give you that information. Um, I know you kind of went through the MailChimp template, um, but one young lady asked a question about um, is there a template to, uh, that you can use to invite people to join her email list? Yeah, so so the the landing pages option has has several different templates. MailChimp has several templates you can use for that. Um, I always say just keep it simple. So MailChimp has made it so that when you cre press create and you press to create a landing page, they've done a lot of the work for you. Um, so you can choose one of their templates and then then you can kind of just play around with the settings and, and pull in pictures and change font size and colors if you need to. But that's actually a lot of what we do for clients. We, we, design, we design lots of templates and emails for clients. So let me know if you need help. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Linda, when, when you were creating the email, welcome email, she says, thank you for the code. And yes, will you send that to me? Yes. So I, I will send you that first name. It's a first name code that if there is no first name in MailChimp, it will not put like the word test or whatever. Um, you can actually Google um, F name, F-N-A-M-E, merge trick. F and F name merge trick and you will find that code. It's like a if, if then, if then code. Okay. Um, and then let me see here. We have from Hans, he says, is this um, format universal for mobile and PC devices? Great question. So a lot of what we do, um, I'm just gonna paste that first name merge trick for you guys in the in the chat in case you wanna copy and paste it real quick. Um, yeah, so so a big part of doing emails is that we have to test them how they look on mobile and on desktop. So MailChimp has an option when you click preview, you'll see a desktop icon and then you'll see a little mobile phone. You can click mobile and look at the mobile formatting. Um, usually things are formatted pretty well you know, between the two, but sometimes you have to make some adjustments in the spacing. Um, so we highly recommend testing and previewing that mobile that mobile preview. Um, Mailchimp also has an option. It's called inbox preview, and you can select all these different email. You can select um, like Outlook or Gmail or Android, all these different email clients, and you can see a preview of of what it would look like on each of those different email clients, which is pretty amazing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So Dave, do you have anything or can I, should I keep going? So <laughs> <laughs> um, when, when you, um, what, what have you found uh, gets the best traction on these welcome emails on the different um, media outlets that you, that you use? Uh, I know a lot of people are using like LinkedIn now. I mean, is that, is that um, a pretty, I mean, what's, what's your experience? What do you recommend for your um, You mean in terms of, of getting people to sign up? Right, yeah. So it's, it's interesting. Uh, I mean, all these channels are, are important. Um, I think it depends on your business. Um, 
I actually, like a week ago, I, I went on Twitter, which I never go on anymore, and I posted a link to my landing page to sign up for my newsletter. And I got a, a lot of new subscribers from Twitter, which I, I totally forgot to utilize. Um, so I would say they're all important. Um, I recommend even doing a Facebook ad to lead people to that landing page to get people to sign up. You, you could put $5 a day on a Facebook ad and it will get people, you know, with the goal to get people to your landing page and to sign up for your list. Um, it's using ads is a great way to, to get people to sign up. Um, but yeah, uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is super important. Um, Instagram, you know, it really, really depends on, on your business. Okay. So speaking of landing pages, um, Judy says, how do you get the landing page on your website? Yeah, so that's a great question. So a landing page is you can actually hook up your your domain. So so your website is is www.sbdc, whatever. Um, you can connect that to your, your landing page that you created. It's called a um, custom domain. There's a little bit of stuff you have to do with your, your hosting, your web hosting, but you can actually do that through MailChimp. So you can, you can connect your, your domain name to your landing page. Um, other things you can do, you know, if you have a website, you can actually create a landing page in your own website. You don't have to use MailChimp. Um, so you can create a new page in your website with the sole goal to, to, to collect signups. You can put a form in um, and stuff like that. Uh, but that that landing page I just created in Mailchimp uh, was actually a Mailchimp. Um, actually, I'm, I'll just show you really, really quick, just so I don't leave you hanging. Um, but you'll see here this this landing page where you see Edit URL. So I have here. Um, I actually purchased a, dom a domain name through through Mailchimp. Um, but you can you can use a Mailchimp domain, or you can use your own custom domain, which you would connect here. These are two that I own that I bought, um, so you can connect your own website to this page, so that now it's going to look like. Uh, well, it still says mail, mail. It still says Mailchimp in the address, but ideally, you you would connect that you know with your website. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Cool. Okay. So thank you for that. So Ira asked, how do I get Facebook addresses? And do I need to get them to fill out an email form? Yeah, yeah. So that I, I get that question a lot. Um, that is why, you know, social media, we always say you, you don't own your social media followers. Like you you can't really get their emails. You have to ask for it. You have to post that link to that landing page and ask people to go sign up. Um, you you're you got to get them to opt in. Um, you can't. There's no way that I know of to export email addresses from your your Facebook followers. Um, Mark Zuckerberg owns all those emails, but but we do not. So that's why it's super important to get people to sign up. Sign up. You want to capture those emails um, as much as you can. OK. Does he need to get them to fill out an email form or no? Um, yeah, so so people need to fill out that. You can make it so it's just email and first name, and that's all you have to that's all you have to collect. But but the main goal is that you're getting that person to opt in. They have to they have to actually fill in that form. Thank you. Um, so Terry says, can you create a spreadsheet and upload a database to get an initial universal email? To get um, a universal email to get to, to get started, you mean? Yes. Um, yeah, so so you can absolutely import 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 spreadsheets into Mailchimp um, it, or CSV files. They let you import. Um, and, and that's a great way to start. You, you're, you're not supposed to import people that have not opted in. So they have not, those people that you're importing, they have not signed up for your list. So you have to be really careful doing that. But I always say like, if, if you, they're, they're your close contacts, if they're colleagues, if they're people you know, 
if they bought tickets to your events or whatever, I, I think it's I think it's fine. But um, Mailchimp will tell you that everyone on your list has needed needs to opt in. Um, but yeah, I, I import lots lots of spreadsheets. I will just say that uh, Terry, it's really easy. You just copy and paste your whole list um, into Mailchimp, and it sorts it out for you. Super easy. Totally. And they actually ask a second question. They say, "Can you give us an estimate on cost for regular emails?" Yeah, an estimate. I'm not sure what you mean. Um, like in terms of, of of Mailchimp, of what it would cost, or so the entire question was: Can you upload a database to create a universal email, and then can you give us an estimate on costs for regular emails? So I would assume it was Mailchimp. Yeah. So Mailchimp has several options. They they still have their free their free plan. So you can sign up today for a free plan and start emailing people. Um, when you have to upgrade is uh, if you want more automations so i think they give you one welcome automation with the free plan um but there there's like a standard plan and, and another plan above that um so if you want to do do more interesting things like a b testing so testing what's the best time to to email people um then you have to upgrade your plan and it's it's very affordable um it's based on how many contacts are on your list so if you have 500 you know, I think it's like nine ninety nine a month, um, but it goes goes up based on contacts. Thank you. So yeah. Marilyn asks, is it possible to change the name of the URL address that Mailchimp generates to something more catchy for our business? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you you can really customize where where I just showed you where it says edit URL. You can absolutely customize that in any way you'd like. So I think mine was said like Emily's email sign up, but I could make that whatever I wanted. Okay. Last one that I found. <laughs> okay. so, so this one is from Morgan and they ask much of what you're talking about is transferable to constant contact and HubSpot. Yeah. But what about bomb bomb more specifically, what does research say about reader engagement with videos embedded in emails, which hmm. actually open in a new window versus traditional text image emails, if you have that info? Got it. Um, yeah, so so yeah, all this should translate to other email programs. Um, Constant Contact, there are so many email, email providers now. Um, I just happen to, I would say all of my clients use MailChimp, so I'm most familiar with that. Um, in terms of video, clicking and then it going to like YouTube, um, you know, it's nice when a video plays right in the email and you don't have to do anything. Um, that's why MailChimp does have that video block that you can pull in. Um, but I think it's, you know, if you, you wanna add a button and say click here to watch a video, that's fine as well. Um, and then what was the last part of the question? Oh, they just wanted to know if you had any information, like research that kind of says about reader engagement, video versus text, if you have it. Yeah, yeah, there's there's lots of, of data and research about that. Um, I, I'm constantly trying to learn about, you know, what works and doesn't work. Um, you know, I know images are really, really important. If people are visual, they want to see, they want to see pictures and images. So I'm a, I'm a fan of emails that do have, have graphics and images in them. Um, but I know many email, email marketing experts that love like a text only email because it loads quickly. There are no issues with deliverability. Um, images, you have to be careful because like like with video, they may not load. Um, so there is a lot of like, there's a lot of data. Um, but for me, like I work with a lot of e-commerce clients that sell a product. And so I love designing emails that that really like showcase that product. And, um, you know, any any of the brands, like if you, if you subscribe to Nike, you're going to get a beautifully designed graphic email. Um, so so it, it kind of depends on your business. Yeah, I agree with you because videos can go left real quick. So I agree with you. <laughs> so, um, Dave, I think that's the last question in our chat. Okay. Well, I have a question. So, Emily, you kind of outlined uh, very nicely about uh, our welcome email. And so if I was to subscribe to your list, I would get one email, which is great. 
but um, there's other things that you could do to maybe, you know, expand upon that, right? And you kind of mentioned a little bit earlier on. Can you do yeah. another little review of that? Yeah. Was, so yeah. while it, while a welcome email is so important, it's also really important not to just send the welcome email and then just drop off off the, the face of the earth. Um, you want to make sure that you are are continuing to engage your subscribers. So that is why we also recommend doing a welcome series of emails, um, three or four or even six or seven emails that you know are spaced out. So you can tell MailChimp, send this one two days after the, the previous email and then send the next one three days after the previous email. And then let's wait a week and let's send another one. So you have this automated sequence or workflow that runs automatically and is just constantly engaging your subscribers. Um, so we like to do, you know, maybe one email is is a story about your business. And then the next email is maybe more about what you're selling or a product, um, you, you know, weaving that in in the sequence. Um, but there there's so much you can do uh, to, to set up these kind of longer automated series um, to really, really keep people engaged. Nice. Well, um, Dave, been, I'm, uh, Dave, I'm sorry to interrupt. We just had another question come in. Is that okay? Sure. That's okay. It. Sorry. Judy asked, what is the best way to keep your email from going to spam folders? Oh, that's a, that is, that is a big question. That, that could be an entire session. Um, <laughs> and we, you know, I deal with this with, with all of my clients. Um, there are lots of things you can do. So, one, one of the main things is in MailChimp, you need to auth what's called authenticating your domain. And this is different than verifying your domain. So authenticating, you actually put these, these records into your hosting. So say GoDaddy is your host. You have to add these little codes. It takes two minutes. It sounds complicated, but it's not. And it basically tells tells these, these, these senders of your email that that you are you are a good person and that you're verified and authenticated. Um, so I always recommend doing that. Um, really watching your subject lines. Um, certain words they say can trigger spam, like free and you know percentage. And um, there are lots of articles out there that talk about trigger words that you may want to stay away from. Um, and also that from name and that from email is really important. So. Your from email should be from your domain. So www. whatever your website is, should be an email associated with that, not a Gmail. Um, and, and preferably not like a sales at email or a support at email, like an actual person or a hello at or an info at email. Um, but there are lots of like little, little things you can do to hopefully hopefully stay out of the spam. Um, I also recommend regularly cleaning cleaning your, your email list. So anyone who is not opening your emails, you can actually archive them. And that, that helps keep your list clean and tells tells your, your domain that that you are that people are opening your emails, if that makes sense. Um, there, there's lots of lots of stuff on that. That was a good question. So Tony, we have any other questions pop up very quickly? Um, I think that's it. I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows that we will be sending you a link to the replay and you will get a copy of the presentation along with that email. Yeah. I'd also like to tell everybody that, uh, that's hanging out that um, on Tuesday, October 20th at 11 a.m. Eastern, Emily's gonna come back with us on our Toolkit Tuesday sessions to really walk us through this additional steps that we need to put out an automated series of email and, and some other things where we're going to drill down into it and really make your uh, email marketing uh, much more successful. So, yeah. And, and please feel free to, um, I, I'm on Instagram mostly. So if you're on Instagram, please reach out to me. Um, my, my name on Instagram is Emily Ryan likes, like likes your photo, Emily Ryan likes, um, feel free to shoot me a message. Um, my, my website is westfield-creative.com. So you can always um, contact us through that. And I'm always happy to answer questions um, that you have. Uh oh, you all. So you can't get off that easily. Sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> we have one more question pop up. I'm sorry. Um, they said, can you filter who hasn't opened emails re recently? 
Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what I was sort of mentioning. You can create. It's so great. You can create a, a segment in wow. Mailchimp um, of what they call inactive subscribers, and you can say, um, create the segment of people who haven't opened an email. You can say the last twenty emails, or the last fifty emails, or even the last five, like five emails, and then it creates that. It will automatically create that segment of people, and you can select all, and then you just archive them. Um, if someone hasn't opened an email of yours in 20 email campaigns, they really do not need to be on your list because it's affecting your, um, you're affecting your domain score, like sending score that, that triggers spam. So you want to really remove those inactive people every, every couple months. Thank you. And I appreciate you being the trooper and taking on that last question. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah. All right. So, Emily, thank you so much. I mean, it's always great when you're on. It's oh, um, thank you. You really are a fountain of knowledge, and I, I really appreciate everything you do for us. You're great. Oh, thank you so much. It's so fun for me, so I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so again, everybody, we're going to um, sign off here in just a second, but uh, you'll get a copy of the uh, recording here later on today, and uh, we'll send some information for our Toolkit Tuesday, where Emily will come back on the 20th and uh, really walk through some other stuff. So, with that, I'd like to say goodbye. Tony, you have a good afternoon. I'll see you around. Bye. You all have a great Maybe. afternoon. Thanks, guys. Goodbye, everybody. Join us next Wednesday. Bye. Bye-bye.